Um, Madam Deputy Speaker, I'm delighted to welcome this bill back um, to, to the Chamber. It's an important part of our reforms uh, to strengthen the protection of animal welfare across the full spectrum of offences. At the most serious end, uh, the Animal Welfare Sentencing Act has increased the maximum sentence um, for animal cruelty from six months to five years um, for uh, penalties that are for things like dog fighting, illegally cropping a dog's ears and gross neglect of animals. This bill addresses uh, offences at the other end of the spectrum, targeting penalties of less serious offences by creating a system of financial penalties up to £5,000. I welcome this approach. I welcome toughening up laws at, at the less serious end of the spectrum, and I hope that they will act as a deterrent um, and as an educational tool um, to, to many people. And I think as the common agricultural policy payments wind down and cross compliance is phased out, we have opportunities um, to improve and strengthen enforcement mechanisms, introducing a range of proportionate measures of enforcement and providing new, more consistent penalties by extending penalty notices to all kept animals or rather to all those who keep animals, um, because as I mentioned uh, the last time this bill was before Parliament, Madam Deputy Speaker, this bill doesn't actually address the issue of errant animals. And I think I recounted last time the escapades of our pig, Andrew, and our donkeys, Sergeant Wilson and Godfrey, who staged a break-in um, of the chicken run. And I'm sorry to say that uh, in the months that have followed uh, since we last debated this bill, things have not improved. Just a few weeks ago, we had another breakout, Madam Deputy Speaker. This time, it was the alpacas, uh, Florence, Vera and Wilbur. Uh, it was a lovely, peaceful, sunny Saturday morning, and we just enjoyed a nice breakfast, and we were sitting down to coffee, and my husband looked out the window and did a double take and said, where are the alpacas? And I said, oh, well, I don't know. Maybe they've gone out of that gap in the hedge that you confidently assured me they'd never escape from. So into the car we piled, still in our pyjamas, now in our wellies too, and bombed down our drive at about 100 miles an hour in our sort of Land Rover, shaking, falling apart. Scanning the horizon and the fields, anywhere to see if we could see a ginger head, a black head and a white head grazing peacefully, but no, we couldn't see them anywhere. Onto the main road, no, no sign of them there. Into the village, accosted the startled looking postman. Have you seen our alpacas? No, not since I, I came to deliver the mail. They were in the paddock then. Great, they can't have gone far. So back we went and then we tried the other way and drove around a few more fields and finally we found them munching happily away, completely um, completely unaware of the drama and excitement they caused to our Saturday morning. Life would be so dull without them, Madam Deputy Speaker. And so I'm proud to support this excellent bill um, that <laughs> offers the protections they deserve. Um, I know it's welcomed by the NFU, by the RSPCA, by Battersea Cats and Dogs Home, Blue Cross. I think it's fantastic to see that huge uh, spectrum of support. I do appreciate, though, that the NFU um, have raised uh, some questions about the appeal mechanisms, as flagged earlier by my honourable friend, the member for Buckinghamshire, and I am interested to hear from the Minister what recourse there is for appeal in the case of genuine misunderstanding or misinterpretation of the facts. Madam Deputy Speaker, <coughs> our country is a world leader on animal welfare. Uh, there's no place for those who mistreat animals, and I welcome the part this bill will play when it becomes law. Yeah, yeah, yeah.